Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 11 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I just got back from mining, and I'm repairing my pick. Hooray! Uh, and my hammer, because I completely broke both of them. Uh, did I have cobalt in you already? If not, you're about to learn that cobalt goes in here too. Hooray! Cobalt ain't it. Nice. Um, you might notice, because there's an overlay on these things, we've got some updated mod versions. We just upgraded to the 1.1.0 version of the pack. As of today, when I'm recording this episode, it's currently in beta. So if you want to jump to it and it's not in release by the time you're watching this video, just go into your Curse Client and just click on the Versions button, and you should be able to see that, uh, let me take off my backpack too, that, um, go up there, you, thank you. Uh, basically, uh, it's currently in beta, right, so you have to switch it to beta manually. Uh, once it's flagged for lease, it'll show that it's available to just update to immediately. Lots of updates, lots of new versions of mods, lots of tweaks and changes, and extreme reactors. A lot of people commented about a lack of power gen options in the pack. Honestly, I thought there were a lot of power gen options. There's actually additions, there's extra utilities, there's uh, Draconic Evolution, there's um, Ender IO, there's Deep Resonance, there's RF Tools. It's literally like 10 different mods that power generate. But people wanted more. People wanted more. And uh, I knew Extreme Reactors, which is a um, basically a direct port of big reactors, was available. Um, so talked to a couple of my friends. They said it's actually pretty stable, works pretty well, does a pretty good job. So I haven't actually played with it or tested it much, but I've heard it's good. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, there's, there's no Enderium liquids, and a lot of the liquids that we're used to using um, from, let's say, uh, Tinker's Construct aren't really available. So there's going to have to be other ways to cool your reactor, which you can do with gold and diamond blocks and lots of other options. So those of you familiar with big reactors from 1710, extreme reactors in 1.10 is pretty much the exact same mod. It's a direct port, and uh, I hope you guys are excited to check it out. Um, so, we've got a new mod. Yay! Among many, many, many mod updates. Um, another thing people mentioned is that their lasers did not look cool like my lasers. I had manually updated, actually, additions for the mod spotlight I did in my pack. So the prior version of the pack has the old laser rendering. The new version of the pack has the new laser rendering. So if you upgrade the pack, you will get these fancy looking lasers um, that were not available to you prior to that. Cool. So, real quick discussion about what's new and exciting in the pack. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I think what I'd like to do today is, and by the way, I hooked up my smelter and made it a literally, it can fit one block. It's super tiny. <laughs> but uh, I needed to do that so I could smelt my cobalt. Let's get started. What should we do today? I think what I'd like to do is try and get these guys ready to process ores. Shall we? All right, guys, so I'm working on making more machine chassis. Um, basically, we're going to want sag mills and alloy smelteries. That's the method I've decided to go with for processing my ores in that building over there. The first thing we're going to build um, is going to be a system whereby this chest can feed into sag mills, three of them, and alloy smelteries, three of them. We're probably going to want a power system coming in the roof, uh, similar to the one over there. Um, so we might want a capacitor in the center of this room to feed the machines in it. And that'll be the basic setup. Then, once we've got that going, we'll link the item lasers over to there. Does that sound like a cool plan? Now, eventually, the system will probably all get switched out for something like refined storage, but we're not at the tech level yet to do that. And uh, I want to play with actually additions lasers because they're cool so we'll have this system in place but the what we'll probably wind up doing is eventually the item transfer lasers will go away but the the energy laser relays will continue to exist um, that's probably the long-term plan but for now the short-term plan should work pretty well so we've got that up and running we're ready to roll let's make the sag mills and the other thing so what i'm probably going to need is some gravel should have a bit of it yoink I think we're going to need nine in total. Is there an extra one in the sag mill over here? Yeah, there is. Nice. Okay. Uh, for a sag mill, we're going to need some iron and some pistons. Shouldn't be too big a deal. And then... 
Nice. Three sag mills. Awesome. And for the alloy smeltery, we're going to need uh, furnaces and probably a little bit more iron than I currently have on me. I know I got a bunch of iron while mining. I feel like I got more iron than that. I feel like I definitely had more iron than that. Am I just imagining that? I mean, I might have to go mining again. I could have sworn I picked up more iron than what I actually have here, but I'm, I must be imagining it. It's the only explanation. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll probably wind up doing. Uh, a little bit of another mining run after this. So, and I'm kind of thinking advanced into the future, but I'm going to want more of these guys too. We're going to want nine of them. And then alloy smelteries. Nice. All right, cool. Um, and then we're also going to want some conduits. I don't know what I've got by way of conduits and such. Have we made item conduits yet? I don't think so. And we're probably going to want to use item conduits. Um, so... Let's look into making item conduits. We're also going to need some energy conduits. Um, so for energy conduits, we just need the conductive iron, right? Which is pretty straightforward to make. We're also going to need some conduit binders. Um, if I can be really smart about this, I can use just the eight that I'm going to have. But I might need to cook up a little bit more, which is no big deal. It's just iron and redstone, so it's easy enough to make more energy conduits. Cool. And uh, if I want to get item conduits, we're going to need pulsating iron ingots, uh, which come from smelting alloys of iron and an ender pearl. Now, I do have that one ender pearl I got last episode. Hesitant to use it, but, you know, what are you going to do? I'm going to swap you out. So you're going to make that. You'll make that, and we'll put these other two in here. Cool. And that will get me what I need by way of item transfer, which we're going to use to transfer from the chest to the sag mills and the alloy smelteries. Ender.io's item transfer system is, in my opinion, one of the best. Because I think, and I might be wrong, but I think it's the only 1.10 one available, and probably one of the few 1.7 ones even, that has separate item transfer channels within the piping system. What do I mean by that? If you don't know, you're going to find out. So I'm just going to make as many item conduits as I can right now, which is 24. Nice. Let's go check this out. So let's use iron ingots as a sample for what we're going to need to do. Because um, I need more iron right now as it is. So let's do that. Uh, I'll probably also snag some copper just to have as a demonstration as well. So let's see. How am I going to want to run this? We're going to have the capacitor in the middle of the room. And then that is going to dig underground. And we're basically going to want one, two, three for the sag mills and one two three for the alley smeltery and i should be able to run this all underground rather well and if i can then yay so let's do this we're going to place down our sag mills one two three and our alloy smelteries one two three okay um we're going to feed item conduits underground to these blocks and we're going to configure them all to do multiple things. Um, the best way we're going to want to do that configuring is with a Yetta wrench that I did bring with me because I am so smart. Let me talk to you guys all day about how smart I am. So basically, and we want to make sure that this is in either everything mode or item only mode for now. From the chest, we're going to both extract and insert into the chest. Okay, so we can either extract from the chest insert into the chest, do nothing, which blocks the connection to the chest, or in and out. And when it's in in and out mode, you'll see the arrows up and down, in and out. If it's in extract only mode like this one is, the arrows are extracting, right? All of these are probably um, going to be in insert and uh, extract mode. So we want all of these to be in and out mode, okay? Cool. Nice. Okay, so that looks good. Um, from there, we're going to want to do a few things. All right, guys, so I did a little bit of testing. Um, there's something you should know. 
Black Quartz Ore from Actually Editions, which by the way, I need to turn off advanced tooltips. I had to fix this. Um, won't fit in a sag mill by default. There's a config file you need. This config file is being pushed out in the latest version of the pack. So if Black Quartz Ore doesn't fit in your sag mills, update your pack to the latest version and it should. Okay, and basically it'll do the same thing it does over there. It'll process black quartz ore into dust. Uh, let's see. There we go, sag mill. It puts it in here so it can go into black quartz, crushed black quartz, and then that can be smelted into the black quartz itself. Um, so, easy peasy. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to say this oak chest is going to receive ores. Every ore you receive is going to be sent into the sag mills. And every um, ore that the sag mill processes then needs to be sent to the alloy smelteries. And every ore that the alloy smeltery processes is this going to be sent into the oak chest. So since these are going to be smelting, we don't want it to be making alloys. We want it to be making furnace mode only. This way, if copper and tin happen to be in the system at the same time, they won't both land in here and then combine into bronze, for example. Right. So as long as these are all in furnace mode, then we're in good shape. Cool. So that's step one. Uh, step two is take a nap because the sun's getting a little bit low. Um, we're also going to need power over here. So I think off camera, I'm going to craft another capacitor um, while the sun's going down and we'll be back in a minute. So I'm just going to need another piece of gold and we'll be right back. So first off, let's get our capacitor placed down. Um, so we'll just pop you down there. You're probably going to be configured to input from the top and output to the bottom. Here's spider. It was like, ah, there you are. I know, I'm terrible at combat. I know. Let's temporarily build what'll be roughly our roof. And then let's see if we can get you talking. I don't know how far away this is gonna be, but we're gonna see if we can get him off and go into this guy. Will you talk? Yay, connected, nice. So this will look nicer once we A, get more lasers, and B, really configure the system properly. But long story short, we should now be able to laser stored, boom, laser connected. And now we should be getting power at a rate of about 500 R of a tick, which I need to check into because it should really be a thousand, I would expect. Um, but it's all good, we're transferring. So I just checked, and uh, the reason I think that it's doing 500 is it's trying to split it from that capacitor and this capacitor. So since there's two machines that are capable of receiving it, um, even though that one's already full, it's still kind of cutting it in half. It's not wasting the power, so it's not like 500 is being lost. Um, it's just saying, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm only setting 500 RF a tick that way and 500 RF a tick this way. The one that's going over there isn't being used, so no big deal. Uh, I'm gonna throw another stack of canola in here. Just went and harvested from my farm. This should be producing power again, relatively soonish. And then this guy over here should be getting power. So now let's hook up conduit power. So what I'm gonna do is conduit power, one, two, three. And this thing should be draining now. And you can see on the mouse over, it's about doing 90-ish, nice. One, two, three. Extra nice. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're draining the power out and we're filling up the internal capacitors of these guys. Cool, so we're ready to set this up. So the way we're gonna configure this is with channels. This is where the power of Ender.io's item conduits really come into play. So with this, we're gonna say we're going to insert and export, right? So let's configure the extract mode first. We're gonna say you're gonna extract on channel brown, okay? And you're going to always extract on channel brown. What that's gonna do is automatically look through the entire Ender IO item conduit network that's attached here for any configurations that are set to insert on brown. Currently, there are none, okay? So that's why the copper ore is not going anywhere. Nothing is allowed to insert on channel brown. There's one channel for each Minecraft color. We can also configure this for round robin. If we did that, it would rotate and insert uh, in here first, and then the next one here, and then the next one here. This would kind of keep it going, and that would be kind of cool. You can also configure self-feed disabled, which means that if this was also inserting on brown, it would prevent itself from feeding itself. In other words, extract and go right back in. Cool. Um, 
You can also set the priority on inserts, but we're not gonna worry about that too much right now. So let's set this guy to insert on brown. We'll do the same for this one and the same for this one. So what we should see here now is if we throw a handful of copper ore in here, say 15, boom. What it should do is extract about four at a time, and like I said, it's gonna round robin it, so it'll take turns. And each one of these will get a set of copper ore. Nice. That's cool. And it's processing the copper ore and turning it into copper ore powder. Beautiful. Now we're gonna want to extract from these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure these to extract on channel blue, okay? And we'll make that always active. So extract on blue, always active. Extract on blue, always active. Now it's looking for a blue channel to extract. Cool. Uh, there are no blue channels yet. Not yet. So in order to do that, we want to set these guys to insert on blue. So we will say insert on blue. And now what we should see is all the copper powder going into here from all of them. That's fine. This guy is going to be set on blue, and this guy is gonna be set on blue. And what we'll probably do is set you on your extract to also do round robin. So it'll kind of take turns. We'll see how we like that. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, I'm not sure. But long story short, now the alloy smeltery is smelting copper ingots for us. Beautiful. Uh, and then finally, we need the extract and the insert. So this guy, we're going to leave insert on green. We'll set these guys to extract on green, always active. So what that means is it'll extract any copper and insert it into the green. In theory, why did you go to brown? Extract, channel green, always active. You guys, what are you doing? You're killing me. Oh, right. Huh. Because it's uh, extracting again. Right. Uh, it's inserting into here and then immediately getting extracted. So we're going to have to prevent that from happening. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of working. Let's set insert. We'll set extract to never active for now. I would like it to feed back into the original chest. We can do this with filters. It's not the end of the world. Um, so you're definitely routing properly, so that's cool. Sweet. By the way, when you process with sag mills, sometimes, um, let's see, like if we look this up, occasionally you'll get some cobblestone and occasionally you'll get some uh, a third kind of color or a third kind of ore, so that's pretty neat. Um, so just keep in mind, you might get stone, you might get like gold or something. It's rare, but it happens. And it's a good thing that it happens. So let's set you to extract on green, always active. Extract on green, always active. So you guys are gonna extract. I would really like to go back into that chest. But if we wanted to do that, we would have to filter the extract. So the other thing we could do is have another chest for the export, which might be just a little bit easier. So let's do that. Let's come in here. Let's make another chest for the time being. We'll make this the uh, green chest. Does that sound like a plan? So this could kind of sit like here. And we could say this is insert on green only. We'll tell this guy to only be extract on brown. And now the green inserts, instead of happening here, should all land in here. Cool. So green gets extracted and thrown right into here. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to process my iron. And what we should see, um, once I set this guy to always active, we should see iron getting extracted and routed. Nice. And then once you guys have made a, one set of processing complete, you'll probably start routing to the alloy smelteries. And these guys will start cooking up my iron for me. Beautiful. I'm loving it. And then once you finish cooking, you go ahead and drop your iron into here. Nice. We did get a little bit of nickel, because sometimes you can get nickel um, from your iron. Nice, 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 nice. That's what I like to see. See, like iron powder, sometimes you can get nickel. It's a 10% chance, or tin, 5% chance. So by processing our iron in here, we're getting a few extra items. By the way, throwing flint in here, or dark steel balls, which we haven't made yet, but is a thing, um, totally improves the chances of getting those secondary bonuses. Nice. All right, so let's take a nap. And be right back. 
it's daytime again, and we should be getting close to processing the last of our iron ores. Nice. That is so cool. I love automation. That's what I like to see. So, now we have to figure out how we're going to handle getting the ores over here and getting them back. It's probably going to be another item laser system, and uh, we're going to want to hook that up. But I don't know if I have the lasers handy. Let's see. So, we've got lasers on the roof here, right? What would look cool is if I had an item laser going up here and following kind of the same path as the energy lasers. So we'll have like multiple lasers going between buildings. And that would be kind of neat. And as long as they're all part of the same network, it should be relatively easy to transfer from one to the other. Um, what I'll probably also wind up doing is instead of this being a chest, it's going to output to probably one of those ESDs um, or even a hopper. Probably an ESD would probably be best. Because um, I think if I output directly to the ESD, then I can have that dump directly. Or you know what? Maybe I could even output it directly. Yeah, I should be able to output it directly into one of these item interfaces. So instead of it being into a chest, it'll be into one of these item interfaces that then sends the items to be sorted into our main sorting system. Nice. Does that sound cool? I think that sounds like a plan. So let's give that a try. Um, so we're going to need another item interface, and we'll probably need a few more item laser relays, okay? Um, we're probably going to want one to be advanced, at least. Because uh, we're going to want to have, we're going to specify what types of ore are allowed to be extracted over there. That's probably the plan. Yes. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, let's see if I can pull this off, guys, because I think that I can. The hardest part about this, I think, and I've got a really cool feature to show you about these item lasers and the relays and the way they work. So let's see. First, I'm going to try and get... Let's try and get this. We'll do the item laser relay, let's say, here. Now, can I link you to this one? Yes, awesome. So for now, that's good. Um, we'll come up with maybe a way to make that look a little bit better in a minute, but for now, that should work. All right, let's just extend a little bridge across here. Okay, you will link up to, let's say, and we'll, again, we'll, we'll probably make these lasers look better in the future. This laser relay, too far apart. How about here? Is this good? Connected. Nice. Okay. And then we're going to link to here. Might as well use the actual locks that we're going to build this building with eventually. Here. Of course, I forgot to link it on this side. Where's flight when I need it? Okay, and then we're going to need one of those item interfaces. So this is where it becomes cool. You ready, guys? All right, guys, we are back, and I've made my item interface. Okay, so let's recap and refresh our memory on how this item interface works. I've placed it in the center over here of these six blocks. Okay, the way the item interface works is it presents itself as the summation of all the inventories attached to the item laser relay system. In other words, let me fix the roof here while I'm talking. In other words, this item interface, Ender IO conduits, hoppers, everything else sees this item interface as having all these items in it. Okay, so literally everything that's in here is available via the item interface. Cool. That's why when we go ahead and throw iron ingots in there, it goes ahead and sends it along the wire and sorts it into the appropriate iron chest. Okay, because it sees all these chests available. Now we're filtering, okay, on inbound. Inbound items mean things that are allowed to go into this chest. What we want to do now is filter on outbound. Why? 
let me show you because it's really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to place the advanced item laser relay on this dude, okay? The inbound filter on an item laser relay are what are items that we're allowed to insert into this uh, storage array network, right? So it's what are items that are allowed to go into the chests? The outbound side are items that we're allowed to extract from the chest. So what things are we allowed to pull out of the inventories? In other words, what are we allowed to present to the item Ender IO item conduits under here? Okay. So if we configure the outbound to say tin, for example, tin ore uh, will be allowed to be presented to the item conduits, and only tin ore will be allowed to be shown from all the items in all those chests. Anywhere tin ore exists, it'll wind up landing over here and be allowed to be extracted. It's going to be allowed to be extracted. The item conduits themselves will do the actual extracting. So we set this guy to extract on channel brown, right? So if I configure this guy to allow tin ore on the outbound, okay? And let's go over here real quick before we do this because I want to make sure that we're clear on how everything's working. What should be allowed now is the item conduits can extract from all these chests anything that matches that tin ore whitelist, okay? And there happens to be eight of them in there. I'm holding a stack in my inventory because I don't want to process it all. So there's eight tin ore currently in here, okay? We've also got a stack plus 23 tin ingots. I'm going to take them out, okay, just so that we don't have any tin ingots in here so we can see everything working. That's the way the advanced item conduit filter thingy works. So the advanced item laser relay says you're allowed to pull out from the entire chest network 10 ore. You're allowed to insert anything. We're going to make it an empty blacklist, okay? Meaning you're allowed to insert any items you want into the chest system through this. Cool? Cool. So what this means is once we connect this laser, it should, with the item conduits even completely unfiltered, be able to extract all the tin ore and only the tin ore from our chest storage system. And that tin ore will be processed. And as you can see, I've also set it back to insert on channel green. It'll insert on channel green and stick it right back into the item interface, which should auto sort it immediately. You ready to give this a try? So all we have to do is connect our lasers. Boom, laser connected. And what we should be seeing here is you should be allowed to extract tin ore. Now you set still to extract on brown. Yes, everything should be configured properly. Let me check something real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, I know what the problem is. Uh, this chest is set to whitelist what's allowed to go out of it. So the items are allowed to go out of this chest is an empty whitelist. In other words, nothing is allowed to go out of the chest. There's your problem. So we have to set this to an empty blacklist. What we should see now, hopefully, is the tin ore getting extracted. Check that out. So we just specify that you're allowed to extract out of that. And the tin ore should be getting processed over here automatically. Sweet. And then it's being smelted. Double sweet. And once the smelting operation is complete, it'll be inserted back into the item interface. And the item interface laser will resort it into the system for me. Let's check that out. So that smelting is now complete, and the items disappeared. Where did they go? Theoretically, they went into my item ingots chest. Nice. Hey, look, 10 ingots. Ha <laughs> ha, it's working. So do you see how this is working? Basically, on every block, you can specify this is what's allowed to go in, and this is what's allowed to come out of this chest. We made it an empty blacklist saying everything's allowed to come out of the chest. Why is not everything coming out of the chest? Because over here on the item interface, it's kind of the reverse. This guy says, here's the things that are allowed to come out of the overall network. These are the things that are allowed to come out of the laser network. And these are the list of things that are allowed to go into the laser network. Does that make sense? I hope so, because this is really powerful and cool. So now all I have to do is add to my whitelist what things are allowed to come out. So for example, black quartz ore. Boom, I put that in there and automatically we should start seeing ourselves processing black quartz ore. Ha ha, and then it's getting smelted and then it's being taken care of over there. How awesome is that? 
The only problem we have right now is a little bit of power. And of course, a little bit of design structure. We have to make things look nicer than they currently do. But that's extremely powerful. If you really stop and think about the things you can build with this, it's insane. You can filter so much on both sides of the laser network, right? You can filter on each individual storage chest, what's allowed to go in and what's allowed to come out with a pretty verbose filter. You can make those things pretty large as we've seen using the item uh, filters on here. And we should have gotten more black quartz. We totally did. And that is super, super exciting and cool. So basically I throw black quartz ore. So check this out, here's what's gonna happen, okay? I'm sorting all this stuff, right? And everything's nice and sorted and happy, right? When I sort black quartz ore, it's gonna land in here. And then it's gonna immediately be extracted and processed. And then once the processing is complete, it lands in this chest. That is some really cool automation. And I'm excited to see how that works because it means I can make that ore processing room nice and simple. Now, clearly we're going to have a little bit of a change in terms of the way that the lasers flow and everything. And I'd really like to get phantom faces up and running um, because that would mean that I don't have to have lasers going into the building. They can sit on the roofs of the buildings and then phantom face their way downstairs, which is pretty cool. Um, how's this stuff doing? Uh, well, one of them's a little bit getting there, but we still have a long way to go for those four ender pearls. Er, er. We're gonna have to figure something out with Ender Pearls, guys. I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do. But I think this is a good wrapping up point. So at this point, it's very easy to process our ores. All we need to do is add to the whitelist on what is allowed to go out of the laser relay network and into this item interface. Um, so that, and remember the item interface doesn't have a storage. It just presents itself like a tile entity saying, hey, I've got all this stuff. Here's a list of things that I'm allowed to show you from the entire network. You guys are allowed to extract or do whatever you want. I could throw a hopper under here. I could do whatever I want to extract, but this is super cool and I'm pretty excited about it. Anyway, I think it's wrapping up point. So what we're gonna do is wrap up the episode here. I'm gonna go ponder on how I'm going to do stuff. Um, there's a couple other things I wouldn't mind getting. Um, probably from, I need to go mining again because uh, I am low on several things, including gold. I went mining for a long time and I realized I didn't find any gold down there. So I need to get more of that. So I'm probably gonna put away some things like you and you. Also with the new uh, version of actually additions, he added a mod filter. So instead of filtering on specific items, I can filter on a mod. So I can have a chest here that just has Ender IO. And as long as there's one Ender IO item in the filter, it'll put all Ender IO items into that chest, which is awesome. Um, so we might need to expand our storage room at some point so that we can have a couple chests for mod items. Cause right now, pretty much everything's dumping into this excess inventory cause we're not filtering on any of that. Um, but anyway, if I go process my tin ore now, uh, yeah, you did not, I did not, that's not my sorting chest. Bad, bad direwolf. Pay attention to what you're doing a little bit more. This is my sorting chest. Okay. So I throw this in there, boom, everything gets sorted appropriately, which is so cool. And, uh, there, everything's sorted appropriately into here, and you can see my tin being extracted and processed right now. That is awesome. I'm gonna add lead, nickel, and silver, and bauxite to the filter. And uh, that should allow these things to be processed. We also have to throw gold and iron in there, probably copper. So there's a few things. If I get to the point where I have too many items in here, I'll wind up, um, so we'll put you in there, we'll put you in there, and we'll put you in there, right? So now these things are all allowed to be processed. Neat. That's all there is to it. I could always use an item filter if we run out of slots, but I think I'll be all right for now. So notice by the way that it's not pulling everything out right now. Those sag mills are probably back stuffed with items. Once they clear out, um, the next set of items will be allowed to go in. Dude, this is so cool. All right, for now let's wrap it up point. Dial 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And as always, take it easy.